This week I'm going to show you how to paint this magnolia in watercolour. Hi, I'm Helen Campbell and this week I'm going to show you with step-by-step -step instructions how to paint this bright magnolia with watercolour. So grab yourself a cup of tea and let's go. First of all, you'll need to get your reference photograph. Just carbonise the back as I've shown and trace it down. I'm using a 0.5 mechanical pencil here just to sharpen up the edges. Let's do a material run through. I have my colour chart here and the colours that I've chosen initially for this tutorial are as follows, although I may change my mind a bit later. First up we have cobalt violet, followed by a bright violet, transparent orange and finally Payne's grey. But like I said, we can add some colours to this a bit later on. The that I'm using today is De La Rowney, £169 mixed media paper and the photograph and the line drawing will be put on the Facebook group and I'll put all the details in the description box below. To begin with, I mix a watery mix of Payne's grey and cobalt violet and I'm applying it to every petal. This will form a really good base to apply the different layers as we go through the tutorial. This watery mix can be applied to all the petals within the magnolia, staying out of the middle. Now I'm dropping in the bright violet towards the bottom part of the petal where it's a bit darker and I will do this to all the petals in turn. Once the paint is dry, I decide to add another colour to the equation. I'm using French Ultramarine on its own and also French Ultramarine mixed with a little bit of the bright violet colour. Once again, paying careful attention to my reference photograph, I'm applying the blue tone on the petals where you can see me. By the way, if you do like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification because I release new videos every single Tuesday and that way you won't miss any tutorials. Mixing and matching the colours as you can see me going through, paying careful attention as usual to my reference photograph to see where the colour switches occur. At this stage your painting will look a little bit messy and disjointed but don't worry that's all part of the watercolour process. Once you've applied the colour, clean your brush and then pat it dry on some kitchen to towel and blend it into itself as I'm doing. That will stop any hard edges. Next petal, same process. I'm adding the blue tone to the top, that's French Ultramarine. The brush I'm using is a number three size spotter. And again, I'll put all the details in the description box below. So French Ultramarine at the top, and then the French Ultramarine and Bright Violet mix underneath that. You can see I'm leaving a little bit of a gap where the petal is slightly lighter. Cleaning my brush, patting it on the kitchen towel, and with the damp brush, wiggling that paint into the paper to soften the edges as shown. Bright Violet on the base, and blending the two together. And just completing the entire process through every single petal. adding a little bit of the bright violet to the undersides of the petals where they are slightly darker. Mm -hmm. 
and just blending in as usual. Just following the reference photograph as I work through. You can see how messy it's looking at this stage, but don't be put off by this. I think so many people can be worried about watercolour painting and it looking a bit disjointed. I'm just using a damp brush here to go through and blend these colours together a little bit where they've dried. And now I'm using a number six size spotter or just use any slightly larger brush to do a simple water glaze over the entire thing to merge it together. I'm mixing Payne's Grey with bright violet and a tiny bit of transparent orange. This will form the base colour of the, the branch or the twig that the magnolia is on. Again adding a little bit, also adding a little bit of French ultramarine. This needs to be a really weakish mix because it forms the base colour on which we will add stronger tones and darker values a little bit later on. This is a number one miniature brush but again use any brush that you have. I'm adding another colour here which is yellow ochre and this can go all over the middle of the magnolia, everywhere, all over the stamen and just let this dry. We will be negatively painting around these later. This isn't strictly botanical, this piece I've simplified it so that you can join in and without getting too worried about the sort of scientific part of the plant. I just want this to be a really enjoyable floral painting for you. Mixing again the same mix as was the base of the, of the twig and just in a slightly thicker consistency for a mid-tone value. So we have Payne's Grey, bright violet with a little bit of blue. If you are interested in learning about botanical paintings, then consider joining my Patreon school where I do a brand new full length botanical painting every single month. Once again, I will put the links in the description box below. I'm now mixing transparent orange with a little bit of bright violet to create this beautiful burgundy colour here.
central shapes. And of course, the base of the petals. I'm just adding a tiny bit of bright violet to this mix to put on the outside where the petal fold is here. As you can see, we're using a really limited palette today. Now I'm using the residual paint on the brush to pull it out into a, into a vein within each petal. So after applying the paint, I just gently poured it out as you saw me doing there. And now I'm enhancing the underside of this petal with Bright Rose. And of course, going back to the orangey mix and just flicking between, flitting between the two, as you can see here, blending it in and then pulling it up. I'm using the grey mix here just to enhance the underside of this little petal. So that's Payne's grey with all the other colours and using the same mix to enhance that branch. Now that this mix has slightly dried on my palette, it makes it a bit easier to add it into the smaller areas as you can see. And once again, doing a water glaze and letting it dry. Here is a rescue brush. It's actually a number two size flat synthetic brush that I'm using to lift out a little bit of color that I actually missed this little highlight here. So a damp brush will usually just lift off your paint and pat it dry with a bit of kitchen roll, as you can see. Here you can see me mix bright violet with Payne's, Payne's Grey and also transparent orange once again to create a dark burgundy mix here. We are now going to use this thicker mix to paint in between the stamen within the central part of the magnolia. You'll need a really steady hand for this and I'm, us I'm using my number one size miniature brush but again use any brush that you have that you feel comfortable with. It's really important that the mix is quite thick. You don't want a watery mix at this point because you will lose control and it needs to be quite gloopy so that you can paint in and out these tiny little areas. I tend to just mix it up and just leave it dry a little bit on the palette so you have full control. just carefully working round one by one.
I'm using the mix just to pull out the colours again into the petals themselves, just to create form. And of course, leaving it dry. Once again, outlining these little stamen in the middle. Going back to the orange mix and outlining all of these one more time and also just paying close attention to the detail now. So I'm going back to the grey mix. We have Payne's grey, bright violet and a tiny bit of transparent orange to create a thicker tone here and also adding a bit more bright violet and Payne's grey to make it a really thickish mix. I'm going to keep that on hand. In the meantime, turning my attention back to the petals by mixing a, another watery mix of French ultramarine with a tiny bit of bright violet and once more enhancing the flowers by pulling up a central vein like this. This mix does need to be watery because you want the veins within each petal to be really, really subtle. I'm just adding one or two here and there for a little bit of detail. And once more, beginning with a orange mix and then taking it to the bluey mix at the top where the two merge together like this. Sometimes veins within plants aren't the same color throughout. This is why I'm doing it this way. This is a zero size spotter, but as always use whichever brush you have. And I'm used to using this paint to outline certain elements of the flower. I'm using the same color on the petals to outline them with. This really makes your painting jump off the page. It just gives it that sharpness that looks really professional. Now going back to the grey mix that we mixed a few moments ago and I'm using this to enhance the, the twig or the branch of the magnolia like this. And I'm just using some of the blue mix to put some veins in here and there and some purple veins in on the other petals. Once again, looking at my reference photograph to see where I need to put these. It's really important that you put the correct color vein on the petal, otherwise it will just look false. And all I'm doing is sharpening up each area in turn as before.
so just keep repeating the process until your painting is completed. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you enjoy painting this way you may want to try this leaf that's on your screen right now where I show you how to paint in similar technique. So click through and I'll see you there. Thank you for watching.